Hey everyone, welcome back to another collection video on the JB and Millie channel. I am JB, and if you're watching this, then the chances are that you really do love the 2002 Scooby-Doo movie. Exactly like us, it is one of our favourite movies. And to commemorate this, along with this collection video, every single month on the 14th leading up to today exactly, we have been conducting interviews with people that have worked on the Scooby-Doo movie. So just to kind of take you on an overview of some of the stuff we've done, all these soundtracks contain the score by David Newman. They were our first interview. There was another Scooby-Doo movie that was in the works in the 80s before this movie that was written by Craig Titley. There's an interview for him on the channel. This was signed by the editor Ken Bader, who of course saw the original Gosnell cut that James Gunn talks about with all the kind of more adult-centric comedy and stuff. We've done an interview with him. And there's so many things that we're doing now. We've done the actor Rio Nagara, who plays the Spooky Island Emissary, JP Manu, who voices Scrappy Rex. We've interviewed the Lunar Ghost actor, Nicholas Hope. There's so many interviews that we've conducted to commemorate this occasion. So if you do want to see that, please take a look on the channel. The playlist will be the card in the video, and it will also be linked down below as well. And without further ado, I guess we're going to go on this collection video. So starting with a different bit of Scooby-Doo media, we're going to kind of do this in sections. It's ways to watch the film. Now this is the UMD video for the PSP. I am doing this video alone, so I'm sorry if the angles aren't completely right. Let's see if we can open this up with one hand. Just to take a look at this kind of, I guess retro now, right? Kind of retro method. There's the original snap case. The VHS, which I absolutely love. I guess we can try and open this one. There you go. I've seen that some people have started to use like on Etsy, those as like light displays. I'm not sure what to think about that, but. This is the Scooby-Doo movie recent family favourites release. So if you look at like the kind of DVD here, unlike with the other DVDs, this one has like the Warner Brothers Kids branding. And of course, as we mentioned, the signed snap case by the editor Kent Bader, who you can see credited at the back there. There we go, Kent Bader. And just to kind of show these off with better lighting, there's the VHS video and watch gift set at the back here. We've protected it, but it just tells you what the collection entails. And I guess the equivalent for the DVD release, the Groovy Beanbag gift set. Now, we've actually done an unboxing on the channel because when we got this, the DVD was like the other way around compared with like the you know the front so it all looked like it had been messed up so we did have to repair it slightly so if you do want to see that being unboxed it is on the channel and now we have the cds so of course i think this may be the one that most people recognize we're not sure but there's the disc because there's a kind of nice almost like promo shot of the gang Although in most cases, it's kind of interesting because like, the promo shots tend to not include Scooby. But there we go, that's the case that we know most commonly with the Lunar Ghost, of course. And I believe this may be the US release. I don't know. I don't know. If you guys can comment down below which one you prefer, because I honestly couldn't tell you. This obviously has more, like characters on so we've got all these set pieces so to the left hand side there's the spooky jester some of the tiki heads and i guess a closer look at the lunar ghost costume but again i can tell you which one that we preferred and this is the single outcast featuring killer mike and sleepy brown the land of a million drums which we actually got because we were going to send a few of the vinyls off to people that we know which is the last item that we're going to showcase in the music section here. Except that was so cheap, it was only about £2. Again, if we can find pricing for some of these items, it's going to be up on the screen right now. 
So when we saw this listed for a similar price, we were kind of like, yeah, why not? It's another vinyl. We'll just send them off to people. And it was the CD. So it's like, uh, I don't know. But it's so good to have because we didn't even know that there was much of a release for these. So that, that is the vinyl. We'll have a closer look at that now. Here we have the front. And the back. And this is super interesting. So on the vinyl, I guess you don't really need to see it all because it's just what you'd expect, you know, the black disc. But in the center, it says it includes the Land of a Million Drums radio edit and the explicit version. So I don't know what the explicit version is. We do have a video where we played it on my brother's kind of gramophone thing. And we could not find a difference between the two versions. So I don't know, if you know what it is, like for we're an adult show, please refrain from like any like wildly vulgar language if that's it, which I don't expect it to be, but I don't know, if you know what exactly the difference is, then please let us know. But yeah. So I guess now talking about some of the books, here is the scholastic novelization of the movie. We have not read this cover to cover yet, but we do plan to, because who knows, it could be like Gosnell Cut related stuff. Ooh. They look like nuclear weapon stuff, and I know that there was um, a cut scene that we found out through Kent Bader where the spooky demons were attempting to infiltrate the Pentagon. So maybe it was kind of like that. Very interesting. Already that's piqued my interest. And you can still pick these up for quite cheap. So this is the complete movie scrapbook, which I think is like, if you can't get your hands on the collector's magazine, this is like the definitive guide. Like look at this. You get interviews of the cast, behind the scenes, look, there's a photo of Matthew Lillard, with director Raja Gosnell. And there's my favorite. Daphne Blake. And again, fun facts are full of fun facts, of course. Oh, well, here we go. This book belongs to JB. Let's look at that. So there's, I think, from what I've seen, that was the promo that they used in France. We also know from a friend that there's a Monsters Unleashed equivalent of these fun facts files, but... You know, we haven't found it yet, but we're definitely looking. Now, I guess the final thing that we're going to put in the book category is the Inkworks cards. It's kind of like a book, right? It's a binder. But anyway, we're going to take a look at that. So this is the binder. The promo page. And like it says, movie story cards. So it is taking you through... The story of the film. I guess we don't really have time. Well, we do have time, but I guess if you want to source these for yourself, you can. I'm going to try and flick through all of them. I mean, we are showcasing individual ones of these every single week over on our Instagram. So if you do want to see, like, because obviously the lighting isn't perfect. But if you do want to see these with like high quality photos and everything, go follow our Instagram. And these are like character profiles, vehicles, locations. Again, like that is awesome. Oh, and of course, there we have the Voodoo Maestro played by Miguel A. Nunez Jr. We have an interview with him premiering in like shortly on the channel. If like you're seeing this when it first comes out. So this I kind of can, can skip over because what they did with these is that there's a card set and these this is like the same cards, same details, but stickers. So these are pretty much going to be, as you can see, duplicates. But there's some rare cards. So these are the, I think, either promo cards. No, I think these are the box loaders. Yeah, the box loaders. So every time you brought a booster box, which we did unbox on the channel like about a year ago now, you got one of these inserted and i think this is a case loader which is a group of four or five booster boxes and you've got hollow cards which are just amazing 
It takes me back to trading cards at school where, like, if you had a hollow card for the day, you were, like, the king of collecting. Oh, there's a little, let's try and get a look at it. Grandma Scooby. And of course, the Luna Ghost, we have an interview with him on the channel. Look at these. And this is, like, close-ups of the cast. And this is kind of weird, I don't know if you guys are going to appreciate this, but what I do is, when Millie and I got together, she just kind of threw everything away, like, in terms of growing up, whenever she'd get something, she'd throw away the box and everything, and I'm, like, completely the opposite. I like to hoard everything. And so, when we opened the packaging, I insisted that we kept a hold of some of these original packets. Comment down below, I guess, kind of, hashtag Team JB or hashtag Team Millie on, like, what spectrum of collecting you're on if you like to throw things away if you like to keep stuff but yeah that's gonna be interesting now we're gonna focus on a bit of the kind of, i don't know how to categorize these exactly but more like the loose knickknacks there's stuff that's not maintained in its original packaging or can kind of just exist in its own right so here we have our plushie of grandma scooby you know when scooby is trying to disguise himself to get on the spooky island plane Lovely that it's still got the tags. A really nice plushie. Now this is not like officially licensed, I don't think. But kind of funny story about this is I got this when I just before sitting some of our Master of Law exams as a mascot. Because I don't know if you guys know, but you can you are entitled as an exam to one mascot. Usually it's like a little ball of fur with a tag on it telling you know what institution you're from. Whereas this was my mascot. And, I don't know, I didn't do that well on my exams, but, hey. The laser cut key ring. Again, shout out to Unboxing Boxes for giving us the heads up on how to find this. Really cool, and it was especially, like, meaningful to commemorate us moving houses to get that. I think this was just a promotional mug. And I say just, but it's amazing. I'm terrified that I break it. A hero will rise on four legs. Look at that. We've not drank from it yet. Possibly one of my hairs. But. Um, and this is a straw that came. Oh no. That came with that mug. He looks kind of. I don't know what Scooby's been doing there. But he looks a bit, a bit on something. To say the least. But it's a cool crazy straw I guess. I don't know if it's officially branded as part of that promo, but if anyone knows any information, again, we're always willing to learn more about these because we're not Scooby experts, believe it or not. We just love to collect things and, I don't know, this movie especially just makes us so happy. So if you guys are going to comment down below, oh yeah, that was released in 1998 actually from Warner Brothers, you know, Six Flags, I don't know, but I, I would actually appreciate that because the more knowledge we have about this, the better off we are. Maybe look at that, Spooky Island. I love it. Another great piece. And this was the Scooby-Doo, I think that's UGC? UGC Cinemas. Again, I can assume that's an American thing. But then again, it says July 12th, which I believe was the UK release. So again, any information that anyone has about this? I don't know. Let us know. This was cool. I got this as like a bundle for only about three, four pounds. Except the catch is, this is obviously the authentic Shaggy reef runner or reef roller from the movie. And this is an authentic quad bike. I know that people call it a different thing, but to me it's a quad bike. Except this is actually Scooby's quad bike. So somewhere the seller says that they're going to try and find both the Scooby Rider and the Shaggy quad bike so that they can be matched up. I actually feel so much better about this piece now after having spoken to production designer Bill Bowes because this is just so awesome. Like, oh, I, I really wish that we could just be in America to get some of this stuff signed. But I guess in terms of like loose items, that's kind of it. We're also going to include this in that category. There's a picture off the back of it which has branding from the 2002 movie.
but to the best of our knowledge, this is a car seat, like the back of it. So say for like long car journeys, you can put like stuff in there. Obviously aimed at kids, but it's so cool because this is the only one that we've seen of these. Awesome. The next section is going to just be the games that were released for this movie. Again, we might not have them all, but this is the Scooby-Doo movie game by Pressman. There's a glimpse of the map. It's so cool because you can see that the spooky demons there, the lunar ghost, the jester. We have had um, a video where we've actually played this. We unboxed it and played it. So if you do want to see that, please check out the channel. And then I guess the other game that they released is Scooby-Doo. Oh, there's a bit of glare there. We'll try and get a slightly better angle. I don't know if that works better for you guys, but by Nintendo, Game Boy Advance. And there you have it. And here we have some of the heftier items that are still in the box. So this is the way called Mystery Machine. All the design from the live action film, of course. You get a glimpse of the cast there. Out of the back, there's some indication of some of the other things in the set. So you've got the Reef Runners, Jester. Look at that. And it's in good condition as well for being 20 years old. Probably more than 20 if it was released before. And yeah, new styles. Don't know what that means. Maybe there's more. And there's the Corgi, of course. We've showcased this on the build-up to the anniversary, so you've already heard the story, potentially, about Millie repairing this. It's a little bit sun-bleached, but again, just so iconic. I think Bill Bowes did such a great job when kind of coming up with a new concept for the Mystery Machine. And keeping on our car theme, here we have a reproduced autograph, autograph HUD series by NASCAR. America Online. And then we've got some bobbleheads. So the wiggling shaggy. If we take it out of the box, I think the stand makes it more clear where it's from. It looks like Spooky Island on the front. Although we're not really in much of a position to be taking this one on the box, to be honest. But there we have Wiggling Shaggy, or Wiggling, and Wiggling Scooby, who again would have come in the same stand. But you can see that they're kind of themed for Spooky Island. And of course, here's the brand though. And then we have... The Clue Finding Scooby. Clue Solving Scooby. Still in fantastic condition. The box is a bit beat up. But not too bad. And it's also cool because these cards are still sealed in. I think that's amazing. And let's see, because I think the back shows us the whole entire... This is what's coming up. So this is really nice to show to transition into the next section, which is pretty much just other collectibles in the packaging continued but this is an indication of what they look like out the box this is literally amazing i can't believe that so let's get a look of what these look like in real life before we forget we've also got these groovy head stacks out of the packaging you could build your own tiki totem pole by stacking them up I think this may even be the same stand from the Wiggling Scoobies. Which are coincidental. Eh? Advertise at the back here. The next item is going to be amazing. Like, ah, uh, this was a grail for the longest time. I'm trying to think about the best way to showcase this. So it's Barbie as Daphne. Dressed like Sarah Michelle Gellar, more towards the start of the film, because that's when she has the scarf on, so just after the Lunar Ghost incident. You've also got Scooby there, and if you look... Oh gosh, we've got a Damon Ritus. So let's look at the back. Scooby-Doo, where are you? Ruh-roh. Scooby-Doo and his friend Daphne need your help. Track down the big clue. 
Pick up their yeah, pick up their sleafy tools and don't forget the Scooby Snacks. Pretend that Shaggy, Fred and Velma are waiting in the mystery machine. Join the kids for a groovy adventure you'll never forget. Don't miss Scooby-Doo in an all-new live-action movie as Mystery Inc. is reunited on Spooky Island to solve the biggest mystery yet. That's amazing. And then possibly, what everyone came here to see, we have this set. Again, I need to be a bit careful with angling because of the packaging. I was tempted to take these out, but in all honesty, I'm not convinced I would be careful enough with them to justify that. I mean, maybe Millie will be there. So if you guys do really want to see these out the protective packaging, then do let us know. Because I'm sure Millie will be able to do something with that. That being said though, we did in fact showcase us unboxing these for the first time. So I'll leave that linked in the description down below as well. Every time I talk about leaving things in the link, go under the section sources. Because that is where we have like everything that we've referred to. And now for the next section, it's kind of going to delve more into the realm of, I don't want to say promo items, but more memorabilia. So autograph things, limited run things, and I suppose a bit of promo, but I don't know. We'll see what you guys think. This is a Funko Pop of Shaggy, signed by Matthew Lillard, who of course not only played Shaggy in the first two live action movies, but also currently is the voice of Shaggy. And of course, a Freddie Prince Jr. signed Fred Funko Pop. We also have a limited edition cell for the movie. It's a really cool image of Scooby. We have to get, like redub over like video because you couldn't really see it in any other lighting than straight up against some like sunlight. So I hope it's okay. It's really cool. Definitely one of our most prized possessions. So we are now in the Scooby room and there's quite a bit scattered around her. Just zooming in, there's a special advance previews from a magazine clipping. It says cinemas everywhere from July 12th. So we're assuming that this is a UK publication. Oh, and I guess quick shout out. If you love this image, it's done by a very good friend, Sophie, who is go who goes by at Scooby Doo Doo for life on Instagram. Definitely check them out. This is the collector's magazine, not a clipping. We've actually managed to preserve it. And I say we and I mean Millie within this frame. So many cool things from just this magazine alone. And this is the big hit magazine. Awesome. Huge shout out to see it's half there. Like there's so many things that I can just kind of like showcase in the Scooby room, but I'm kind of refraining just so we can save a bit of time. There's the Nutella promo. This counts because a lot of this die cast stuff is from the 2002 film. So you'll see that's the Corgi right there that we showcased prior in this video. Oh gosh, there's my finger. And the Sarah Michelle Gala Expose Scooby-Doo magazine. There's loads more. There's some stuff that we just couldn't get put up in time, unfortunately. So there's this, which is a genuine poster from the movie. We've got some more on the way. So please do look out for that. There's loads of cool stuff we're going to get for the movie. That just didn't show up on time. On sale now. And that was promo, an advert, of course, for that magazine there. Now, just going around the room, I suppose if you just wanted to see how our 2002 stuff is displayed. And that is the Kent Bader DVD, which is going to go somewhere else, but just for now, that's where it lives. And some stuff up there. Now, there's our Inkworks cards. We have the signed script from Craig Titley. 
the It's Hot magazine clipping. And then I think a lot of people consider this as like the jewel of our 2002 collection, which is the Sarah Michelle Gellar, Luna Ghost and Scooby-Doo official like genuine theatre memorabilia canvas poster. Which is amazing. And even this room, unless it was like we pulled that right up, which we haven't figured out how to do at this point, is like too small for it. Because it's meant to say Daphne and then the release date. But one day we're going to find the coolest display for this. I mean, this is just incredible. But I tend to disagree, you know. I love it so much. But I think that the most valuable 2002 like collectible we have is the memories from all the interviews. Like, it's genuinely and that is like you know we're gonna we're gonna list that in the card below because there's so many memories but this is amazing and like i say there's a lot more on the way we just wanted to give you guys this video to show you guys what i've got what we've got in this 2002 to commemorate the 20th anniversary so yeah happy anniversary scooby-doo 2002 it's such an important movie for us it's one of our absolute favorites if not our favorite movie of all time so just Thank you every single person watching this, thank you to everyone that was involved in the movie, it's amazing. So if you want to see this, more interviews, more collection videos, then please like, comment and subscribe to JBN Miller.